Hey everybody, today we're going to uh, take a few minutes and discuss the installation instructions for the uh, TMR1086K, which is the fire bottle handle kit. Uh, these pieces here come in the kit. Uh, it's all kind of mocked up here just so you can have a better idea of how it goes together. Comes with a handle, comes with these rods, rod ends, a couple tabs, safety pin, and then the uh, actual pivot tabs for um, the handle to mount on the chassis. So this is what you get in the kit, and I'm going to go over some uh, a few tips and some instructions on how you would actually mount this in the car. So we've got our display chassis out here today, and it's got one of these kits already mounted on it. And uh, this is kind of a, it's a nice location here. This kit was designed to go in this area. A little later on in the video, I'll show you another look, mounting location for it. But um, this is very uh, easy and accessible for the driver to get to. And it's it's very solid, safe platform to um, to mount the fire bottle handles to. So this is one handle operating two fire bottle cables. So this one is uh, our display chassis has a carbon handle kit, which uh, we have available as an option. It comes with an aluminum handle, but we make uh, we make these carbon handles for the parachute and the fire bottle and all kinds of other components in the car. But um, it's the same shape, and everything here is exactly what comes in the kit. So. You've got your handle mounted here, and um, this little tab here is a, is a safety pin. That keeps it from accidentally getting um, uh, the handle moved while you're servicing the car, so that usually stays close and, and uh, is in between runs. That little pin will be in there. So these two tabs here, you can actually see this one tab is bent. Um, there's uh, The back tab here is straight, and it's mounted um, to, the, to the funny car cage tube. And when we... Uh, when we mock this up, we'll take a, a small AN washer and put in between the handle and the tabs, and it provides a little space in there so when it's welded, this isn't too tight. And you can see this handle has just a little bit of slack in there so that it's real easy to move and it doesn't get uh, tight on this bolt. And this bolt here has actually got a nylock nut on it, and you can spin that a little bit so it will move really easy. And uh, these these rods here basically just to extend this back so that you can get the proper sweep on the handle uh, so this uh, laser cut tab back here is mounted on this rear funny car cage tube and then these are the actual fire bottle cables so this portion here with the cable does not come with the kit it comes with the fire bottles so um, this will come with the fire bottles this comes with the kit and this is welded in a location where the driver can easily get his hand in here with gloves on so that he can push this forward and then that will um, pull the cables and actuate the fire bottles in the back so um, again this tab here is a safety tab and you can weld it anywhere in this location here and then make it for this little quick pin to fit in here and then the handle already has the two holes in it to um, to fasten these rod ends to so the only fabrication you have to do is tacking these tabs on but these um, these two rods are quarter inch um, chromoly they're going to be a little bit long they have to be cut off on this end and then they have to be uh, threaded to adapt to the cables because this kit's a, a somewhat universal so we don't know what this distance is here so we can't actually set that in the kit and then expect every one of them to be the same length so these are going to be long you have to cut this down and thread this in um, this is all very easy installation here. This part back here, I want to show you how to uh, to work with these cables. So if we go back over to the table, um, this is the cable that comes with the fire bottles. And depending on the manufacturer, could have a different type of handle, could look just a little bit different. But this is attached the same way that these rod ends are. So you will have to... Um, drill and tap you have to cut some 1032 threads in the ends of these tubes and like I said these tubes are a little bit long so what we're gonna do is pull this handle out and it's there's a little roll pin in here you can just knock that roll pin out and then when this is installed from the factory they kinda heat this up and press it in there so you can just take a abrasive cutter and cut this off and pull this out of the way and then this is about the right size, so if you just take a 1032 die, put this, you can pull this cable all the way out. It's coiled up here, but this will come all the way out of here. You can put this in a vise and then take a, a nice um, 1032 die and start it on in here. If you take the end of this hex, kind of take it on a belt sander and just put a little bit of a chamfer on it. It'll help start that die on there. And then just run, run the threads down 
about three quarters of an inch and then that's going to go back together in this form here and then this tube which you've already taken a 1032 tap and cut some threads in here that's going to thread on to this shaft now so that's how we hook the shaft um, to the tube that comes in the kit and then this nut comes off the back and that's what fits through this tab here so depending on what handle you get they're all very similar to the same and, and this is the uh, this is the safety cable so the way we're going to do this you can cut this cable off and you can uh, uh, discard it because we're going to use that little quick pin up front one of the tips I'd like to tell you too is um, and we see this all the time Fire bottles don't get used that much, and uh, the problem is that these cars, they sit around, they're in your trailer, they're in the heat, they're in the cold, they're in the shop, they're out at the track, they're in humidity, and this wire that's in this sheathing here, um, over time it can build up a corrosion in, uh, in the casing. And so we have seen this multiple times in different cars over the years because what we do when we put this together, we pull this cable out and we anti-seize this cable up and then fish it back down in there and fish it in and out to where we get good anti-seize lubrication inside here to keep that from going up. But we have seen um, fire bottles actuated in other cars that they actually handle broke off because these cables were locked up in the outer casing. And let me tell you something, if you're running 240 mile an hour and this thing's on fire, you do not want these cables to be locked up. So that's kind of a, a normal maintenance procedure that you should do uh, every season is check these cables to make sure they're in good shape and make sure they're lubricated properly and I know it's just another one of those things that you have to do but it is very important to make sure that this moves freely inside that casing because if it doesn't and you need to use that fire bottle um, you're gonna be in a world of hurt uh, so it doesn't take that long to do that it's very simple if you haven't um, if you guys haven't ever messed with these fire bottles they're really simple um, there's a spring-loaded actuator in here and you can see there's a little set screw here that actually just kind of tightens up on this outer casing and so that that wire goes through there and that's holding the the spring-loaded actuator back from puncturing the bottle so there's a seal down here and these bottles have the safety pin in them um, and obviously once you load the bottles with the cable the safety pins come out and these should come off the car and be kept in the trailer or zip tied into the back of the car here but when you want to take this cable out you obviously need to reinstall the safety pin so because when you pull this out you'll feel the plunger kind of move just a little bit with that spring pressure against the wire that's in this cable you have to fish that um, that safety pin back up in there and you actually slide it in and you can feel the end of the spring-loaded plunger and then you just give it a little bit of tension and push it back and then push that safety pin through and see the safety pin is sticking out here and if it's sticking out here you are ready to take this cable out if it's not sticking through here and it's sticking more out of this side you're not ready because if you pull this out you're gonna set the fire bottle off so, and if you don't have these, um, if they got lost or you don't have them, a piece of welding wire works fine. Anything that will fit through that size hole that comes out the other side. So if you've just got a piece of uh, uh, 330 seconds welding wire, it will fit right in there and you can do the same thing from the top. This safety pin can go in from the top or the bottom. It doesn't have to go in this way. I could just as easily do it from the top and fit it in there and push it through. But it does need to stick out both sides. And when you take this out you're just going to loosen up that little set screw right there and then this is going to slide right out and then you can leave this outer sheathing in the car and then from the front here you can pull out that inner cable wire that needs to be lubricated and that should move very freely in there and if it's if it's kinked if it's not smooth if, if, it, if there's any problems with it at all replace this because it's cheap and it needs to work properly and I'm telling you we have seen this over and over where this is not maintenance and that when it's time to use it there's a problem so that doesn't have anything to do with this handle but it's a very good uh, maintenance item that needs to be done and it's standard for us when we get cars in here during the off season or anytime whether the customer's done it or not we do it on their car just to make sure that this is done it takes 15 minutes to do each cable and um, you're back up and running so that's just something else to to kind of add to the maintenance list but 
getting back to this, this is all done. Now these are threaded into there and you can see this is all gonna move if I pull this pin out here and then see them cables are gonna move freely in there. And then as I swing this forward, it's gonna pull these two 4130 tubes out and it's gonna actuate those bottles. So that is just about it for this installation. Uh, this is very straightforward, very easy to do. Um, one more thing I wanted to touch on is <clears throat> on a double frame rail car, uh, a lot of times we will move the fire bottle handle over here just for um, ease of access and to clean up this area a little bit here. So it's the same kit and it's the same pieces. We just don't use these rods. Um, we will eliminate the rod and we'll use a this is a male rod in. We're going to use a female rod in, which is here. This is our mock-up stuff for the shop, but this is the handle. And everything here is the same. So these tabs are the same. This tab is the same. This little safety tab is not on here yet, but it will be when it's done. But this can go down in here, and it can mount on the double frame rail. And then this handle will end up sticking up about like this. And then what you do is you'll move this handle forward so you'll reach over from this side. And this can be up here. Um, you could flip this tube around. This is just a tube we bent up. It can be whatever's comfortable for the driver to reach across. But you, we like it because um, you can set his hand right here, catch this handle, and just push it forward. So either location is good and the kits work both ways. The only thing that you would have to trade out or, or just let us know is if you wanted to mount it on the double frame rail, you would need the female rod ends instead of the male. So um, the rest of it is identical to the kit that goes up on the funny car cage.